Hey everybody, we're uh, going to get this front end ring and pinion set up today. Uh, if you remember last time, we were on the front end. Uh, I've got the knuckles on and the preload set. Uh, since then I've got the uh, original style knuckle wipers on there. Um, this is a new old stock set. It's uh, like a cast aluminum um, part with a rubber seal inside of it and a gasket on the knuckle um, they look very authentic you know being new old stock and uh, they're getting hard to find and what you find now is a uh, stamped steel piece um, with a rubber and a felt on it and they work they work okay too but um, a customer was able to find these so we used them and we've got our uh, tag on there specifying it's a bendix joint and last time we also put the inner seals in and since we got the inner seals in we also tapped in our cup our inner and outer cup for the bearing and um, we're using some original gears so um, they were marked uh, the pinion was marked plus two and that means you take two thousandths of shims out of your pack so um, this is all covered pretty good on the rear end rebuild but um, I'm gonna go over it here again and step by step and stuff um, but if you need a more detailed um, view of it the rear end and the front end setting the ring of pinion up is just about the same exact thing so um, I'm gonna go over it here but um, if you want to see uh, a little more in-depth check out the uh, rear end rebuild uh, that was a few videos ago and um, and that'll explain a few more things to you. Okay, right now I'm gonna we'll get the pinion set in there, get the bearing, the new bearing pressed on, and um, we're gonna get the preload figured out on this, and uh, and see if we can hit it, you know, within a couple shots. So I've got the original shim pack on there, and um, we're gonna put that in, torque it down, and check the rotational torque, and see if we can get that set. Okay, we're gonna do that next. Okay, there's our pinion, and like I said, it was marked plus two on the bottom there. That means it wants to be set two thousandths further, deeper into the case. Um, now these are original Salisbury gears, and there's our preload shim pack. And what you're going to find on the early Salisbury gears is you have this spacer. And then later on, um, when they changed the spicer manufacture, uh, this area here was brought up a little higher and they got rid of the spacer um, but if you have the spacer you need to put it back in um, you can't you can't do without the spacer so we're gonna put that spacer on there like I say we've got the new bearing pressed on there and uh, make sure you press that bearing on all the way when you're doing this because um, that could lead to problems uh, make sure that's seated good make sure your cups are seated perfectly in the case uh, otherwise you're gonna get some false readings so we're going to try our original shim pack and see where we're at on um, rotational torque. And here's our bearing. And that's going to go. That's going to go on that side. We'll tap that in. And guys, you that watch the rear and rebuild. Um, you remember that we used a um, a, a yoke that's got the splines milled out of it. I just milled the splines out. That way we could take this on and off quick um, when we're changing shims. When you put this original on with the splines and if you had to make a shim adjustment uh, it's just a pain to get these on and off. You gotta pull it off every time. <clears throat> so I've got one with no splines. It'll go on there. It'll push the bearing down properly. Um, we'll torque it and we'll check our preload. Okay, I've got the pinion in, I've got the nut torque down, and we're going to take our rotational torque wrench again, and we're going to spin that around, and we're looking for between 10 and 15 inch pounds of rotational torque. This is just a Model 25, it's much smaller than the, the rear. 
So we'll spin that around a couple times. Feels nice and smooth. I think you can see that I'm not sure but we have just about between 12 and 13 inch pounds of rotational torque and that's perfect that's what we want to have so uh, that worked out nice and when you're checking your rotational torque you have no seal in there you don't have anything you just have your pinion in there with the yoke on it and that's it no that seal will change the torque everything will change it so you got your two bearings, your nut, your yoke, torque it down, and uh, and spin it around, and that sets your uh, that sets your torque. That, that shim pack in there is what. If it was too loose, you take a shim out. If it was too tight, you put a shim in there, um, and you'll know by by how loose or tight it is what you have to do with the shims. Um, you could start in small increments of three or five thousandths, and just work from there. Um, but this, this fell right into place. Um, we're going to leave this for now. We'll come back later. We'll change the yoke out. We'll put a seal in there. Um, we know that's right. So we're going to flip it over. And we'll go back over to the bench and um, put some new carrier bearings on. And uh, take a look at that. And um, put that in here and check the tooth pattern and see where we're at. Okay, everybody, we're going to pull these bearings just like we did on the rear end. The only thing different is we pick a different uh, spacer out of the kit because this is smaller. And that fits in there. And you remember our puller from last time. We're going to set the puller up again and uh, pull these bearings off. We'll check our shim pack and um, we'll get some new bearings on there. Okay, we'll tighten those down and I'll get the impact gun out and we'll buzz those right off. Oh, that was starting to open up on me. I've got to tighten my sides down a little bit more. Okay, this bearing is. Uh, proven to be a real tough one and even with the tightening these bolts down on the side to keep the legs from opening up they're still opening up on the bottom um, every now and again you get some like this that are just a bear to get off uh, I've got a big six inch C clamp on there now and uh, let's see what let's see what we can make happen here um, I gotta get these pins driven in again. Okay, we're having lots of uh, lots of trouble with this one, but uh, we'll try and get it this time. Okay, we got everything going the right way. Let's see what happens. It's coming, but we're losing the C clamp a little bit. Let's see if we can make it. There goes the C clamp. Let's see if we got enough left here. Well, sometimes they're a bear like that. You just got to do what you got to do to get them pulled off there. You know, you got to figure they've been on there for 60 years or so. But uh, do what you got to do to get your puller from not opening up. So, um, there's our bearing that we're changing. We'll clean this off, we'll measure our bearings, and um, we're going to put the same uh, shims in there. And. Um, not the same ones because they got messed up a little bit, but we'll measure them and we'll put some new ones of the same thickness in there and then get our, we'll tap our bearing on there. Okay everybody, that side was just as miserable as the first side. And um, 
clamp kept coming off, but uh, eventually I got it. And um, got a new bearing on both sides. And we're going to clean this up a little bit and get any junk off it. And, um, and we're going to set it in the case and check our backlash. So uh, let me give this a quick cleaning. Get that grease off it so we can check our tooth pattern. And uh, meet you back over at the case. Okay, now we're back over at the case here. We've got our carrier, ring gear, and our bearings. And I'm going to try and get this in there without getting in the way of the camera. Basically you want to tip the cups and get them started. I'm having a hard time with the camera in the way here. But um, get your cups started. And then we're just going to kind of tap it in. We're just going to work it in with the, with the rubber hammer. Um, tap it down in there gently. And... Um, <clears throat> we'll just drive it in there until we can get our caps on and uh, and then we'll torque the caps down and check our backlash okay guys time to put the uh, the caps down and if you remember these have to be in the exact same position they came out so we've got our two prick marks there and two there so we'll put that one right there and uh, one and one on this side and those have to go back the same way remember we talked about that in the rear end video um, make sure you mark them before you take them out uh, if you turn them around and stuff like that uh, get them in the wrong location uh, it's not going to work real good for you uh, everything was machined as a unit these were in the case everything machined as a unit so they have to go back the exact same way now we're going to put these in and these get torqued to 50 foot pounds. We're going to torque all four of these. Then we'll come back with the dial indicator and see what we have for uh, for backlash. And if it's wrong, uh, we'll switch shims from side to side to bring the the gear closer this way or further away that way for more or less backlash. Um, but we'll check it and we'll see where we're at. And uh, I'll torque these down and be back with the dial indicator uh, next. Okay, now I've got the dial indicator set up, and I hope you can see that okay. I'll get the ring gear all the way one way, and I'll try and show you what we got for backlash here. That little bit of movement there, that's the backlash. So, we're on zero now, and we've got six and a half thousandths of backlash. And what we're looking for is anywhere between six and ten. And we hit that right on the money. So um, if you didn't have it, if it didn't work out good for you, and let's say you had too much backlash and you needed to move this closer over to the pinion, um, when you change a 5,000 shim from side to side, it gives you about 3 thousandths of backlash. So you move a 5,000 shim and let's say you had fifteen thousandths of backlash move a five thousand shim and move it closer it's going to give you it's going to lessen it up about three thousand so you probably have twelve so just think in terms of five thousandths of shim will give you three thousandths of backlash if you move it closer you're going to reduce your backlash and if you move the ring gear further away from the pinion then obviously it's going to increase it so if you think in terms of uh... five will get you three thousandths um, usually you could hit it on one or two tries um, when you're swapping shims back and forth um, but in the rear end video uh, you saw how we made some setup bearings uh, they just slip on and off easily so you could change shims around um, when you're setting up new gears and you don't know where you're going to be it's a good idea to just sacrifice a set of bearings and make some setup bearings and again that's all covered in the rear end setup video um, you can refer to that for all that stuff but um, right now uh, we've got the backlash good. We've got our pinion set right. We know uh, we're going to run a, a tooth pattern just to see where we are, and um, and then we'll finish this thing right up. So uh, I'll get set up again, and we'll get some marking compound out, and uh, we'll run a tooth pattern. Okay, we've got some marking compound on the teeth there. 
and we're going to rotate that around and see what we get for a tooth pattern on these. Uh, it should be pretty good. Like I say, everything's set up real nice. And um, we're just going to we're going to spin the pinion here to move the ring gear. And we're going to go both ways on the drive and the coast side because we want to check both patterns. I think you can see already the the pattern it's making there and it looks real good uh, let me see if I can get you in there a little better okay so I'm gonna investigate that a little more I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be fine and um, We'll uh, <clears throat> we'll start buttoning this uh, this um, front end up. We still got to flip it back over and put the pinion seal in and stuff like that. But uh, I'll do a <clears throat> a little closer check here of the pattern and be right back with you. Okay, guys, um, I'm real happy with the pattern. I just wanted to check the coast side a little bit more. Uh, when you're setting up used gears, um, you want to try and match the coast side to what you took out because uh, that's the side that's really going to howl on you and uh, make for a noisy gear. Um, again, on that rear end setup video, I talk uh, a, a lot more about the um, uh, the drive side, the coast side, the toe and the heel, and, and, and the pattern and everything. And uh, I didn't want to get into real great detail again, because we already covered that pretty thoroughly. So uh, if you need a little more information on the tooth pattern just go back to the rear end video and watch that one but um, this one set up real nice the um, <clears throat> the drive side matched the wear pattern uh, perfectly and the coast side fell in perfectly as well and um, you get good patterns like that by keeping your tolerances just perfect so six and a half thousandths on the backlash worked out nice uh, we know our pinion set right because it was marked um, so set your pinion right, get your backlash right on the money, and you're you're almost gonna have your pattern fall in perfect every time. But do do a pattern check and make sure it's not uh, out of whack on you. You don't want to have a used set of gears and put a whole new wear pattern in there. It's just gonna uh, it's gonna be a noisy set of gears and stuff like that. So um, make sure you get the the pattern check real good, and um, it'll be a long lasting set of gears for you. So we're going to flip it back over, pull that setup yoke off, uh, put the seal in there, the oil slinger, and um, put the real yoke on and torque that down and, uh, and that'll be the ring and pinion setup for the front end. Okay, I just installed our um, oil slinger. Don't forget to put that in before your pinion seal. And then you've got a gasket that goes on that little ledge right there. And then you've got your pinion seal. So we're just going to tap that in. And then what we'll do is we'll grease up our yoke so it's nice and smooth on that rubber seal there. Put the yoke on, get a new lock nut, and um, torque that down. So uh, hang in there, let me get that seal in, and then we'll, uh, we'll get that yoke in. Okay, slingers in, pinion seals in pinion seal gasket and we got the yoke on with a new lock nut and that is torqued down to uh, right now it's at 175 foot pounds and um, that'll stay because we got that new lock nut on there and uh, that finishes up this end yes everything's spinning nice that finishes up this particular end and we got a good ring and pinion set up so the next thing that's coming uh... we're gonna put the uh... gonna put the axle shafts in there and i'll introduce you to the new knuckle lube that i came out with uh... we're having that special made and um, that's coming next i just gotta clean up the spindles and uh... let me get those cleaned up 
and we're going to fill the knuckles while they're open and we can get at them easy. It's just easier to put the lube in that way. So uh, um, let me get the axles and the spindles and everything ready to go and I'll be right back with you. Okay everybody, we're finally at the point where we uh, are going to put the front axle shafts in. And we're at the point also where we're going to put some of that new knuckle lube in that we developed. And um, like I said when I introduced it in one of the other videos, if you're going to be operating in any extreme temperatures, extreme cold or extreme hot, I have um, specific lube for both those applications. Um, one instance would be like that snowblower CJ5 Jeep that I'm building. Uh, it's probably only going to run in the winter in the very cold, so it's going to get a much lighter um, knuckle lube. And guys that are running in the desert or something like that, uh, you're going to get a much thicker lube. Uh, so I do have a basically an all-season lube, which I consider, you know, I'm here in New England, so I consider the all-season lube from spring for, for spring, summer, and fall. Um, it'll work in the winter and it'll work in the in in the hot summer, uh, you know. So, but if you're in any extremes, um, let me know if you need any specific lube, and uh, and I can get it for you. So I get it in drums and stuff. And uh, what I like to do first is uh, in these Bendix gears, I like to pre-grease them. That way, I know that there's lube in there. And I don't have to worry about just what I put in the knuckle. So I'm going to lube these guys up first. And this lube is not something you'd add to your already greased or whatever kind of knuckle lube you have in there. You, this isn't something that works with other grease. Uh, you have to be at the point I'm at now. You have to have clean joints, uh, clean knuckle housing and uh, this needs to stand alone by itself. It's kind of like um, you can't mix you know dot three brake fluid with uh, silicone dot five you know this is uh, this is meant to be used in new um, rebuilds and stuff like that. Uh, it's just uh, you, you don't want to mix it with other stuff you want to uh, to use it all by itself. So I'm gonna pre-lube these And we'll also put a little bit of grease on the seal surface where it's going to hit that um, inner axle seal. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want that starving for for grease or oil or anything. So we're going to just put a little bit on that area, and then we'll get ready to slide these in the housing. Okay, we know those are packed good, and uh, we're going to get them in the housing next. Okay, what I've done before I'm going to slip the axles in is I, uh, I threw a bunch of lube in the knuckle, smeared it all around, and uh, that's before I put the axle shaft in. It's much easier to put it in. Uh, you could just kind of pour it into your hand and uh, ease it in there. and. Um, I've got both sides filled like that right now and I'm going to slide the axle shafts in right now being careful of that inner axle seal. You don't want to just slide it in there real fast. You want to feel your way. Feel the uh, inner axle seal and make sure you slide through there carefully and then into your uh, your spider gears in there. So uh, we're going to get those axle shafts in right now. Okay guys, the knuckle is lubed and I'm sure I got enough lube in there but after I get this on the road and take it for a few test drives, everything gets slung around. We'll uh, we'll pull this plug and we'll get a pump and we'll pump in any additional grease we need, and uh, and it'll be fine. And uh, what I've done for just the time being, so it won't leak out the holes, is I put the put the spindle on and I put some new grade eight bolts in there. Um, this is a critical area right here. Uh, these these six bolts that's the only thing that holds basically your hub your wheel and everything onto the knuckle 
So it's very common that these go bad uh, when guys are off roading or running them hard and uh, the bolts will pull the threads right out of the knuckle and the hub and the wheel come flying off. Um, it's a critical area. Make sure your threads are, are, are good in your knuckle. Um, and I always use grade 8 bolts and um, the way there's a lot of counterfeit bolts out there now um, I try and stick with a, a particular brand everything I use is, uh, comes from the Lake Erie company uh, there's an LE on the head and um, they come with batch numbers and, um, and you could track your, uh, your bolts um, use a high quality bolt right there and because it goes into the knuckle housing and you got lube right back there make sure you put some uh, uh, sealer on those threads so um, we're gonna end this video here today uh, I've got to get the brakes ready to go on and I'll pull these bolts again I'll put some sealer on them I'll put the backing plate on uh, <clears throat> and then we'll get the hub on there with the new wheel bearings and stuff and uh, and we'll get this whole thing finished up but um, there's a critical area right here use good bolts um, make sure they're torqued properly, put sealer on them, and, uh, and you should be fine. If you got any funny holes right there uh, while you got the knuckle apart, fix them while you got the knuckle apart. You can't have one or two bolts not working for you. Uh, there's a lot of stress right here. That's where all your stress is. And um, the spindle is piloted into the knuckle, but you still need those bolts holding it. So, critical area. Um, well, that's basically the, uh, the knuckle lube. And uh, like I say, if anybody is doing a project and they do need some knuckle lube, I have it. Um, I'm probably going to ship it in gallon or five gallon containers. Uh, like I say, I'm pulling it out of a 55 gallon drum uh, to ship it. So um, uh, probably a gallon container will work out for most guys. But um, if anybody needs any, just get a hold of me. Send me a comment and, uh, and let me know. And... Uh, we're going to be lubing the uh, transmission transfer case next, and I'll show you that uh, very specific lube that I have for that, which has no extreme pressure additives and won't harm the non-ferrous parts. And, uh, and we'll get to that next in the next uh, couple days. But um, just wanted to show you guys the new knuckle lube. And um, it's not just for uh, old Willie's vehicles. It'll work in any closed knuckle vehicle. Um, I know a lot of guys have been after it, and uh, we took a, a whole bunch of time and developed um, uh, the, the right stuff for in that knuckle. So uh, it'll be the last lube you need in there, and uh, it'll last a long time. So uh, like I say, there's the front end setup, and uh, if you like the video, hit the like button or uh, subscribe. And uh, there's a lot more coming on this restoration and, and other projects I'm working on. So... Uh, Tell a friend and uh, keep on watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.